السلام علیکم خواتین حضرات وسیم ایسر ویلکم سی یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی ٹو آف مارکیٹنگ فار نان پروفٹس ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو ایٹ ایٹ دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان دی کمپوننٹ آف لرننگ از گوئنگ ٹو بی انٹیگریشن آف آل دا تھری لیولس آف فار دی برانڈ ریزنگ پروسیس ان ٹو کمیونیکیشنس میننگ کمنگ اپ ویتھ اے کمیونیکیشنس کیمپین وچ از انٹیگریٹو ان اٹس نیچر after it has taken into account all the three levels. In other words, that we have our positioning and personality for the cause right in front of us. We also have the identity level and that we know what are the communication tools available to us. Uh, there are a host of them and uh, that we've got to be very astute in picking up those which are compatible with our cause. This compatibility counts not only in terms of the outreach but also in terms of uh, the financial resource and uh, the human resource that we have at our disposal. So in other words, we are talking about making the campaign very optimal and effective. Optimal in the sense that could we have um, earmarked boundaries within which we operate and could we do not uh, could we keep in store any surprises that may embarrass us later during the campaign. And effective in the sense that uh, we have to have all those tools together uh, which uh, do the job of the outreach and uh, the get us the kind of response that uh, we have envisaged as uh, the part of the objectives. And therefore, we need to be uh, very consistent in order to be optimal and in order to be effective. So in other words, uh, we can say that our campaign is not going to be optimal and effective if it is not an outgrowth of uh, a very serious consideration of the comprehensive uh, brand raising process which comprises three different levels. If that is not the case, the campaign is going to be ineffective, it is going to be ad hoc because it will not be reflective of uh, a consistent positioning and personality platform. And given that, we are going to end up in a situation which is going to be embarrassing not only for the marketing department but also for the organization as a whole. And therefore, we've got to be very consistent to show that we did follow all the requisite steps that formed in the first place, the organizational level, and in the second place, the identity level, and in the third place, the experiential level where our audiences, in particular, the target markets, start experiencing Uh, what uh, we have to offer uh, and uh, the channels through which we offer and the tools that we use in order to offer what we talk about. So we need to count a lot on something which uh, can govern this uh, the process of putting together an optimal and an effective campaign. And I would like to take you back to the concept of uh, style guide which I talked about as part of the identity level. That is okay, something that uh, the marketing people, and as a matter of fact, all in the organization who matter okay, for the communication campaigning uh, have in front of us to make sure that uh, nothing uh, goes unnoticed, uh, making things inconsistent and hence ineffective. So how do we ensure that? Well, we have to uh, make uh, the one particular person responsible for the style guide. Now, this is the same style guide uh, which was developed after uh, painstaking efforts on part of so many different people from within the organization, meaning people from within the marketing department and people from the very top of the organization who gave the approvals uh, for uh, all the uh, 
identity marks uh, that we use as part of our communications. And also uh, the efforts uh, that were put in by our consultants, like people from advertising and promotion agencies and the people who specialize in event management and so on and so forth. Uh, we should not shy away from taking help and support of all those people who are into the field and who may not be the part of the organization, but are in a position to uh, guide us effectively toward achieving our communication and advertising goals and objectives. And therefore, the style guide with which I'm talking about is uh, a result of all those efforts with which uh, all the experts that have put in. This uh, the person generally is um, a senior person within the organization. In a very small organization, the person could be the chief executive himself or herself. And uh, in a larger organization, this person could be the marketing manager or the marketing director. The objective here is to ensure that uh, nothing uh, comes uh, into the organization as uh, something uh, inconsistent with what we already have uh, designated as uh, consistent parameters. Consistent parameters of communication and advertising. So anything which is not in line or not in consonance with the parameters earmarked uh, in the style guide, okay, we have to refrain okay, from them. And this person responsible for maintaining the sanctity of the style guide has to reject all that material that has come into the organization carrying um, identities and marks okay, which are not really uh, reflective of the true positioning and personality of the organization. Not only that, this person could also should carry out uh, an investigation into the fact that why uh, this kind of an inconsistency could happened in the first place. And uh, what in the second place is the remedy to take care of that. And uh, this person could also could has to ensure that, uh, that this uh, kind of a uh, gross uh, strategic mistake is not repeated again. It is a waste of resources and uh, it does not really send positive signals to the marketplace. Any signals uh, with uh, a sense of uh, the inconsistencies are not going to be helpful to the organization. As a matter of fact, they're going to be detrimental. The implication here is for people like you, that when you enter such organizations and start working as assistants to the marketing manager or to the communications to the manager, You've got to be fully prepared in terms of your knowledge about all these uh, parameters. Although you will not have the prime responsibility of uh, putting together these campaigns and then executing them uh, with uh, your responsibility, but nevertheless, you certainly could be extremely useful support to the bosses in terms of uh, pinpointing those factors which are not in consonance with the parameters of the style guide. Uh, because uh, you are being prepared to uh, enter the gates of uh, the organizations and uh, start helping organizations in a very strategic way by making some valuable contributions. Now, the question here is, in order to uh, make communication campaigns uh, very effective, uh, what are the broad uh, parameters that uh, we have to uh, keep in mind uh, and give uh, a very serious consideration to uh, the while we put together these uh, campaigns. I'm going to talk about uh, the factors which uh, we already have learned, but here you see I would like to pinpoint uh, the relevance of uh, advancing uh, in terms of learning more and more uh, of the course because the more we learn, the more we realize that the concepts that we already have learned uh, are intertwined and they play a very significant role in making each other more meaningful and more workable. And therefore, when I talk about something which already has been taken care of as the part of some other component, this is not to be mistaken as a repetition, rather this is to be looked into an effort to broaden your perspective of the marketing effort in the context of a nonprofit, which is going to make use of all the concepts that may have to interplay 
uh, while we put together our communication campaigns. Or for that matter, we put together different strategies. Well, first of all, we've got to be mindful of the fact that uh, our communications are destined to different audiences. This is something uh, which uh, can hardly be overemphasized. The fact of the matter is that this really is the backbone of our communications. And uh, the one mistake, you know, at this particular stage, and we are going to mess up our whole campaign. Uh, what I'm saying is that um, our uh, the marketing and communication people uh, have to uh, be uh, mindful of for the fact that, uh, that they are talking with donors at this particular moment, and they're talking about particular levels of motivations which uh, uh, cause that particular action on their part on which we have been working so hard. Uh, we carried out marketing research in order to realize and uh, reveal, as a matter of fact, uh, what are the levels of motivation uh, that uh, uh, stir you know, those feelings and actuate uh, these prospects into making donations and then uh, make them uh, uh, donors on a repetitive basis and uh, making them kind of very loyal uh, the donors to the organization uh, as long as uh, we have a clear understanding of um, such uh, motivations and as long as uh, we are keeping our knowledge of those motivations up to date uh, because uh, changes can take place. Uh, your donors uh, they may start uh, donating to other causes uh, which are equally noble and therefore your knowledge has got to be uh, up to date in terms of the levels of motivation when you are talking with your donors. Therefore, this goes without saying that uh, the one set of communications that we have put together for one particular audience does not really work for another. Here, I would like to uh, point out uh, another thing, or rather I would like to take you back to the concept of uh, the messaging platform with which uh, we put together to make our uh, communication very effective because that's where we talk about uh, the, all those things that support our the mission uh, as well as uh, the positioning and uh, reflect our personality in a very comprehensive way because uh, uh, that is a platform with which um, the audience uh, when uh, goes through uh, in a comprehensive way uh, educates itself about uh, all the goals, objectives and uh, the uh, steps and measures that uh, we may take to uh, reach our different audiences uh, and uh, uh, make them aware of uh, all that we have put together as part of our programs. It is not just uh, the communication campaign uh, per se, it also uh, is an effort on part of the organization to let it be known to its audiences, uh, meaning all the audiences, uh, what the organization is all about, what it does and uh, where it is destined. And uh, therefore, uh, we can say that uh, the messaging platform as part of the identity level is something very primary. It is uh, the kind of a generic uh, platform uh, which uh, we use as uh, the part of uh, generic and primary uh, communications. Uh, you have uh, the posters uh, for those primary uh, communications. But when it is a question of reaching uh, your audiences uh, with uh, some very uh, particular um, objectives uh, and goals, uh, you need to be a little uh, more uh, uh, precise in terms of uh, the choosing uh, your uh, communications. An example of that already has been given uh, while I talked about uh, the distinctiveness uh, between two different campaigns, uh, the one belonging to the donor audience and the other belonging to the, for example, lobbyists or uh, the volunteers, activists. The point is that uh, you need to bring about changes uh, to communications in terms of uh, updating uh, your uh, status um, uh, as, as uh, the program uh, stands um, in terms of its execution. Uh, because unless uh, you talk about the updated status, uh, you may have to share uh, with the audiences uh, some very interesting uh, stories. And uh, this is something which I talked about earlier as well. So you need to bring about uh, um, a change in uh, the uh, copy of uh, your communication. And this is where the importance of uh, the online tools um, comes in. And uh, this is where uh, the dynamism of the, the online tools plays its uh, the role 
in terms of uh, bringing about that uh, change and uh, making the, your communication very updated. If um, a change has uh, taken place uh, the, to the extent that uh, the organization the, may start uh, pondering over uh, bringing about a change in the primary in the platform as well, uh, so be it. And uh, the organization uh, should do it in that uh, the particular instance. But the, um, the fact remains that uh, not uh, very frequently organizations uh, have to undergo that kind of a change. Um, the change uh, uh, or the changes uh, are basically um, brought about to uh, address uh, different audiences from time to time. And another fact that uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, we need to talk about uh, these changes when we go through the different stages of the behavior change model. Here is another uh, the concept that uh, we are very familiar with and uh, here is the application or rather the intertwining and the interplay of uh, two different uh, concepts or could be uh, more than two uh, when we talk about uh, the communications and the ability of the communicators to take the audience from one particular stage to another to another and to the final stage until the time the audience uh, really has graduated into the final stage where they become uh, loyal donors or lobbyists or um, activists. So whatever is the case, it all boils down to the ability of uh, the marketing communicators to bring about uh, those changes and to convince their audiences if they happen to be at one particular stage of the um, behavior change model, they need to go to the next stage. So from that particular perspective, let us talk about the very first stage, which is the, the pre-contemplation stage. Here you see the objective that the marketing okay, the person has to himself or to herself is to offer a the beautiful alternative to the audience for which you have okay, put together the program. And uh, the basic objective is to uh, bring to uh, light the very fact that um, an established set of behavior which they are following or which they have adopted is not the one which is socially acceptable. And it is not the one which is okay, the beneficial for them. Rather, it is detrimental. It is harmful. And therefore, they have an alternative. They um, offer another set of behavior which if they adopt, they will certainly derive uh, some good benefits out of that. And we know the kind of benefits. I don't really want to go that far back into the concepts that okay, I really have to talk about the fundamentals all over again. But all I'm saying is that uh, it is the duty of uh, the, the marketing person to convince uh, the audience uh, of the existence of the alternative, which uh, uh, is an offering uh, as part of the program. And it is an offering uh, as a good alternative uh, for the established behavior, which is kind of a negative behavior. For example, your audience is into very heavy smoking or drinking or taking drugs or they are not paying attention to family planning, so on and so forth. You need to talk about uh, that alternative very convincingly with the audience that uh, the alternative that you have is a better set of behavior which is going to yield so many different benefits and uh, prepare them to graduate to the next stage, which is all about contemplation stage. And as the name suggests, and we already know that contemplation stage is the one where the people start considering very seriously the offering that you have made as a good alternative to the audience. And it is the job of the marketing people to uh, here again, they play a very uh, prominent role in convincing the audience that uh, the uh, alternative uh, carries benefits uh, that far exceed the cost that they may have to pay when they change the behavior. So, in other words, uh, it is a very formidable challenge for which they are going to prepare uh, their audience uh, into accepting 
the alternative to which uh, they made uh, their uh, audiences aware of in the very uh, stage of uh, the pre-contemplation. So, in other words, here, you people are going to capitalize on the opportunity which you have created uh, by offering that alternative in the first place and then cashing in on that opportunity by highlighting the benefits with which you have to convince them are far greater than the costs that they may have to pay. So, you see the role of uh, the, the marketing people that uh, they need to play as uh, the part of communications uh, in order to uh, make their uh, audiences uh, more and more aware of uh, the process of uh, the behavior change and uh, the setting the ground uh, for uh, uh, steering them uh, toward the final stage uh, where the ultimate behavior change takes place. And that is the ultimate objective of the, uh, the marketing department and you people. Therefore, uh, with that, could we get on to the next stage, could, which is could, all about the preparation and action stage. Here again, uh, the, the marketing people have to play a very important role. A question uh, that may be flashing into your mind, could, how do marketing people uh, do all this uh, great job uh, with uh, so much effectiveness and uh, make their audiences uh, graduate from uh, one stage to another? Uh, well, the answer lies in not just uh, the communication campaigns uh, um, in terms of the tools that uh, we talked about uh, as part of the experiential level. There are uh, some other uh, efforts on part of the marketing people that they have to undertake. And I'm going to talk about the ones I'm done with, uh, the factors uh, responsible for uh, the making your campaigns very effective uh, in the sense that uh, they are really uh, integrated with uh, the three levels of the brand raising process. So let me be done with that first, and then I'm gonna talk about some additional uh, communication tools that uh, the marketing people have to themselves in order to make the kind of uh, the marketing effort a very successful um, I'm talking about, meaning uh, taking their audience from one stage to another. Here. The marketing people have to prepare their audiences into taking the requisite action. How do they do that? Well, this takes us back to the concept of self-efficacy, which uh, we learned as part of one of the components uh, in which uh, I talked about uh, many members of the audiences uh, being uh, confident about uh, their taking uh, requisite actions, but feeling at the last final stage a little shy due to any given set of reasons and marketing people jumping in and helping them with the behavior change. So in other words, what I'm saying is there are people who are educated, who are fully appreciative of the moves that you have put together and the efforts that you have undertaken in order to have them take the requisite action. But then you see they are waiting for people like you to come and talk about uh, this uh, the program or this particular uh, step they should take. So in other words, they still need uh, the support of someone uh, who can uh, give for the whole thing the final push. And uh, this is where uh, the, your role as a uh, the marketing expert uh, comes in. This uh, role uh, can be played uh, by way of uh, telling them some inspiring uh, real life stories uh, which uh, they have not heard before and uh, which uh, can convince them that uh, the other people have taken uh, similar actions and uh, have felt uh, better off. And uh, by the same token, uh, you can talk about uh, the motivating factors which uh, have been responsible for people uh, taking action toward uh, the betterment of society. Uh, you can talk about uh, the motivations in relation to donors, for example, and uh, you can talk about different testimonials uh, given to the organization or to your program or to the staff members of the organization uh, by individuals or groups or uh, the agencies. Uh, may those be uh, local agencies or international agencies. Uh, whatever testimonials stand uh, in your favor, you have to talk about those in order to convince uh, your uh, 
uh, audiences that now is the time they have to take the final action uh, so that uh, they can complete uh, this particular uh, stage of uh, the graduation. One more important factor has to be considered here is, and that is of theme. In the meaning, what is going to be the theme of the communication campaign? Uh, whether it is going to be funny or friendly, or sympathy arousing, or it is going to be outright threatening. Uh, it is going to be friendly if uh, you're talking about uh, improving the environment, uh, for example. It uh, could also be educative in a way, uh, because uh, you want uh, to develop a certain level of awareness on part of your audiences uh, to keep the environment later free. And uh, if uh, it is uh, an anti-smoking uh, campaign, uh, you can be a little uh, threatening uh, because uh, it is uh, very harmful. And therefore, uh, you can talk about the number of deaths uh, caused by lung cancer for which the prime culprit is uh, the smoking. Uh, the number of deaths caused uh, worldwide uh, by this uh, the particular disease or ailment uh, is something that has to be compared with uh, any other uh, cause uh, for death. And I'm sure you know uh, it can bring about some uh, interesting statistical uh, comparisons uh, which uh, will be uh, inviting uh, for your audiences. Um, I, I can give you another example. Uh, if you are talking about uh, the uh, AIDS, uh, it is kind of a disease uh, which results in um, death. Uh, no question about that. And uh, you can be uh, very uh, convincing and uh, very uh, threatening uh, in your uh, campaign. Uh, saying that if you do not change your behavior, you may die. Now, I'm not saying uh, that uh, we use these uh, kind of uh, very direct words. Uh, we still can uh, play with uh, the uh, copy of the communication campaign. But then the fact remains that we can be very threatening uh, in terms of the theme. It is the mood that really matters. So we have to create a mood uh, which automatically uh, homes into uh, the uh, hearts and minds of your audiences uh, who must think that they really are uh, approaching fast toward the terminal day uh, if they did not uh, the change their behavior. Let us now uh, talk about the last uh, the stage, which is uh, the, the maintenance stage. Uh, as the terminology suggests, uh, it is... Uh, the stage uh, where uh, the marketing people uh, maintains the changed uh, behavior uh, of the audiences because uh, this is uh, where the ultimate change takes place. And the objective for marketing people is to uh, maintain that change. It is just like uh, having loyal customers on the commercial side. Uh, once people have uh, started uh, using uh, your product, you like them uh, to uh, become uh, repeat uh, the purchasers. And uh, once they buy uh, your product or your brand again and again, uh, they have become brand loyal. And exactly by the same token, you have to make sure that uh, your audience becomes loyal to your program. And whatever role they are playing, they've got to play that over and over again. And uh, that causes a lot of economies because uh, you know, that's something which is equivalent of a repeat order. And that's something I think that I'll be talking about in relation to some other concept as well. But uh, the, the fact remains here is that um, we need to uh, maintain behaviors uh, once they have been changed. Because uh, if they go back to the old behavior, uh, we still have the challenge of uh, going back to the earlier stage or earlier stages and start working on those people all over again. And we know from research that uh, there are people who go back to their original behaviors, but the objective of this stage is to maintain the behavior that already has been changed. And here again, we can talk about certain motivating stories in order to keep their motivations at a very high level so that they never think in terms of uh, the days which are behind them. Uh, with this, I would say, that uh, the factor of uh, communication in terms of uh, having different communications for different audiences is uh, over. And we now move to the second uh, the factor, which is extremely important, uh, 
in order to keep our campaigns very well integrated into the uh, strategic process. This takes us to the third factor, which is of budgeting. And the budgeting plays a very important role in terms of uh, the pre-planning uh, all the moves in uh, terms of our communication campaigns. The uh, factor is that uh, the many organizations would like to go for uh, huge communication campaigns in order to be very visible and in order to have a widespread outreach. Uh, but then you see the uh, factor of uh, financial constraints and uh, the other associated constraints within the organization uh, that come into play and keep organizations from uh, executing uh, their wishful thinking, if I can say that. And therefore, it is extremely important for the organizations to tie all their plans with uh, limited budgeting. Uh, it is a good move because it really prevents organizations from uh, running into embarrassing situation later on uh, while they are in the process of executing the program and all of a sudden they realize they have to cut certain parts of the program or they have to cut certain parts of the communication process itself and they are uh, kind of hamstrung uh, to uh, go further ahead with uh, the uh, communication uh, campaigning. Uh, that this is an extremely detrimental situation uh, which uh, uh, outweighs uh, all the uh, positive impact that uh, has been created so far and therefore uh, should be avoided under any given circumstances, meaning thereby that we have to resort to budgeting. Um, and budgeting exercise basically is, like I said earlier, uh, tying your uh, plans with uh, the amount of uh, rupees that you have at your disposal. Uh, if you think uh, that you are uh, short of money, take it up to see in the board meeting. And uh, this is something I talked about earlier. Uh, and uh, uh, you, you, you solicit support uh, not just from the board of directors, uh, but also uh, from uh, your donors and all stakeholders, convincing them of the effectiveness of the communication campaign that uh, you envisage uh, launching and uh, uh, making use of in terms of achieving your goals. And uh, the chances are that you will be in a position to convince all the stakeholders. Well, if not all of them, many of them, or if not many of them, some of them, and will end up uh, generating more revenues as uh, part of the advertising or communications budget. Uh, having this budget is going to be a safety valve uh, against uh, any embarrassment that uh, may be in store for you if you did not uh, prepare your budget in the first place. And uh, therefore, uh, you have to be uh, very uh, careful and very considerate um, of uh, this particular factor. The fourth factor is uh, about uh, the competition, meaning what the competition is doing. And this, of course, you know, takes us back to the concept of market intelligence as well, but I'm gonna talk about that as part of uh, another uh, learning. Here, I think uh, what is important is that uh, we must know uh, what others are doing and uh, we have to surf their uh, websites, we have to uh, subscribe to their newsletter, we have to be very analytical about the content, rather the quality of content that they have and we've got to pinpoint all the dimensions that we think are responsible for their position of strength in the marketplace. And uh, at the same time, we also should be kind of critical uh, of all those uh, moves that uh, have failed on their part and uh, have reflected their position of weakness. And we, as a matter of fact, can uh, capitalize on that, uh, having known that something our competitors or our peers started or initiated, it did not work. And therefore, we should keep it at a distance and do something which offers us kind of an assurance against a more effective communication campaign. So in doing so, we also have to be analytical of the factor of the interactivity as to how they interact with the different audiences and like I said, if uh, you have subscribed to their newsletter and uh, if you uh, go to uh, you know, one of their blogs, you interact with them and you know what they're all about. And the fact is they can do the same with you. And you know, this tells us, you see, the uh, power of uh, the online tools and at the same time, 
the need for us to be alert all the time and need for us to be very quick all the time in uh, terms of uh, being very updated uh, with all the stories and uh, with all those uh, the matters and substances that can be very convincing for different audiences. So the four factors that uh, I've talked about in the context of uh, integrating communication campaigns into the strategic uh, process are uh, we are uh, dealing with different audiences and therefore we need to have uh, different communication campaigns. And we have talked about to see these communication campaigns in terms of the differential um, with regard to different stages of the um, behavior change model. So don't forget that uh, we are communicating with them um, at a time when they are changing their behavior. They have started changing their behavior. Some of them already have changed um, uh, the stage where they were earlier and now happen to be at a different stage. And therefore, you see that we have to go along uh, those uh, the stages with them. And as a matter of fact, facilitate them in graduating from one stage to another. And that is where the test lies. And that really is a very formidable challenge for uh, the marketing people. But then the fact is that is something uh, only they can do and none else um, on their behalf could, will do that job. And then uh, I talked about the factor of uh, uh, budgeting, which is um, very important because it keeps us very realistic. And uh, we can come up with uh, the optimal level of campaigning. Uh, we can be constrained and restrained to begin with instead of uh, jumping into the water before putting up a toes in the first place. That's what I'm saying. Now, uh, the uh, last uh, the factor that, uh, that I talked about uh, was about competition. Uh, we learn a lot from competition and uh, the, given the online tools, I think it uh, is no longer the case which used to be uh, the more than 10 years ago uh, when people really had hard time trying to find out uh, what the competition was really doing. They had to go to the marketplace physically to find out uh, the different moves they had uh, they made and uh, then carry out certain studies to find out to what extent they had been uh, successful. Uh, with the advent of uh, the internet and all the tools that uh, we have uh, to uh, choose from, uh, we can um, uh, be more effective uh, while sitting before our computers. This is not to, not to discount the importance of going to the marketplace in physical terms, but this is a support that we have uh, to ourselves. Uh, with this, uh, uh, the component of uh, the integration of communications uh, with uh, the uh, strategic process is over, and uh, I'm going to talk of uh, the next component. This component is going to be about additional tools of communication. The reason I call them additional tools is because they have not been part of the experiential level to which we all have been exposed. And therefore, they have their own role to play. Uh, and they basically are uh, the personal communication and uh, relationship marketing and then uh, internal marketing. The fact of the matter is that uh, you people might have thought already uh, how come a combination of um, uh, different tools of uh, the experiential level have uh, got so much potency that uh, they really can make uh, communication campaigns extremely optimal and effective. The answer lies uh, in um, uh, sharing with you that uh, there are some additional tools and uh, with the addition of these tools, the communication campaigns can really be made uh, very effective. And as a matter of fact, in the context of uh, nonprofits, the tools uh, which I'm going to talk about now are really the ones without which the experiential level may not be complete. And therefore, uh, let me talk about uh, the, the personal uh, communication to begin with. Well, the personal communicators could happen to be a very, very important and potent tool of uh, communications with any organization. Uh, organizations have uh, the different kind of people. There are organizations that have uh, the people who are very good at uh, communications. They are highly energetic and competent people, uh, which of course is not to say that others who are not good at communications uh, are not really competent, but the fact here is that uh, some organizations are endowed with this kind of human resource 
that is there for the taking and they do this job on behalf of the organization to connect uh, with their uh, the stakeholders and they can personally engage them uh, to a level which is uh, much more effective than advertising. This really is uh, a statement that I've made and uh, it is uh, full of substance uh, because whenever you talk with people on one-on-one um, -on -one basis, there are so many different things which you can share and uh, you can create a bonding uh, between the organization and uh, the stakeholder, uh, maybe the donor, the activist, or the volunteer, or lobbyist, uh, whoever he or she happens to be. Uh, you can not only immediately connect, but you really can engage with those people. And therefore, uh, the organizations that are endowed with such human resource are lucky organizations. And they generally happen to be those who are resourceful in so many different terms and uh, are um, generally large organizations. But then there are organizations that do not have uh, the kind of resource that is uh, good at communication. Either they do not have the resource or even if they have, the resource is uh, uh, short of uh, what they really require. So on both counts, they have uh, a resource level which is inadequate. Uh, in order to be um, fully equipped with uh, an adequate level of resource, they have to either hire more people or uh, uh, seek the more volunteers who can do this job of uh, the personal uh, communications. Back to personal communications, uh, organizations need to have uh, the people who really are uh, energetic, very self-confident, and uh, the full of uh, uh, vigor and zeal to take on uh, formidable challenges of uh, refusals and resistance. Uh, the whenever and wherever they go, talk with different people, it never is um, a level ground. It is never a piece of cake uh, they're there for the taking. They have to they go through a lot of uh, the hardship in order to convince people in the first place to have them listen to, to them, meaning to, to, to the marketing people or to the communicators uh, before you know, they can connect with them and engage them. So it really is a formidable challenge and therefore uh, these people need to have uh, some very special skills. Before I start talking about the skills, uh, let me share uh, this thing with you uh, once again, that uh, the personal communicators could also uh, have to be mindful of the fact that uh, they must go through the behavior change model, the same good old behavior change model which you know, I keep talking about because they have to talk those people into making the graduation from one stage to another. And while they do that, do not lose sight of the fact that they talk with not just the clients, the meaning people who are part of the program, they also talk with the donors, with the lobbyists, and uh, with uh, the volunteers. They talk with donors with a very obvious objective. They want to raise donations. They talk with lobbyists because they want to have uh, support on their side for different people and agencies to lobby uh, on their behalf, meaning on behalf of the organization. And they need to communicate with uh, the volunteers because they want to recruit them uh, into the becoming uh, very useful workers for the cause. And uh, this is uh, where uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the fact that uh, some of them need to become good communicators you know, comes in. And uh, those uh, the volunteers uh, who happen to be the good at communication, happen to be good at comprehension, and have you know, good personalities, they could become very good communicators on behalf of the organization. But the fact remains that uh, Different uh, audiences uh, could have to be uh, contacted. Personal communicators could have to go to all of them. I'm not saying they have to go to each and every member of the organization. They basically have to go to those who are influencers. Because once they have talked with the key influencers, the ripple down effect will automatically make job uh, uh, they, are, they have at their hand uh, easy and effective. Another factor that uh, uh, they have to keep in mind and other organizations could have to keep in mind that uh, these uh, the people, meaning personal communicators, uh, could have to 
communicate uh, with, with all the audiences that I with just enumerated in terms of identifying prospects, uh, with the developing relationships, uh, cultivating relationships, and uh, developing through communications and personal relationship a sense of obligation on part of the audiences so that they start feeling kind of committed to the cause, so that they can um, take the uh, decision which they have to take to graduate from one stage to the other, meaning to have them graduate to a higher level. And therefore, uh, these people uh, the need to have uh, uh, the very special skills. But before I start talking about the skills, let us now summarize uh, with the help of uh, the talking I've done as to uh, what really are the objectives of uh, the personal communicators. And don't forget uh, to keep in mind alongside you know, this intake that uh, they are working side by side with other communication tools that you have kicked off as part of the communication campaign. So this brings us back to the point, what really are the objectives with which personal communicators are gonna have to achieve? First of all, they have to do prospecting, the meaning they have to identify prospects who would be willing to donate. And uh, once they have done that, they set the process on and what happens next is uh, something I would leave to your imagination. Of course, you know, they have to keep uh, visiting those people and generate the more funds for the program. The next objective uh, they have uh, at hand is that of uh, the persuading. But once uh, they are uh, in touch with them, they persuade them over and over again into making uh, them committed to the cause. And this is something that I uh, mentioned earlier. They should have the ability to create a sense of obligation on part of uh, the audience uh, to become committed to the cause. And uh, it is this commitment which is going to take the audiences from one stage to the other. So this is another objective they have at hand. The third objective these uh, personal communicators could have to achieve is that of servicing. Now, you might think uh, what kind of service you know, these people uh, are going to provide to their audiences. Well, it could be a lot of information technical information that they may have to share with their audiences because when they are going through uh, different programs or when they are talking with, uh, with other stakeholders, uh, some programs uh, can entail uh, the very uh, in-depth kind of uh, the medical um, initiative and uh, the treatment. Uh, and therefore, they may have to talk about uh, the certain things with the help of uh, their colleagues who happen to be doctors and that is something with which uh, uh, they have to share with the audience and that is a service which they render. This is just, just one example that I have uh, cited. Um, they may have to give a lot of information on uh, the family planning program or uh, similarly on any other program that uh, requires a lot of uh, professional expertise to uh, impart and then share with all those who are part of the program. The fourth objective is that of uh, gathering market intelligence. Now, very interestingly, this takes us back to the concept of market intelligence as part of marketing in information systems. Uh, you will recall uh, that you people as the marketing uh, support to the organization are responsible to gather such information and nothing could provide a better opportunity than being with your audiences, talking about your programs and doing your canvassing for the cause. And also in the process, generating information, not only about your own programs, but also about your competitors or your peers. Because you also will recall the fact that the many stakeholders um, and audiences uh, that happen to be common to different causes. Uh, the people donate to different causes, people uh, that can work for uh, the more than one cause, and therefore you may be talking with uh, those uh, the key uh, the personalities uh, who are uh, uh, connected with uh, the more than one cause. So uh, here it is a great opportunity to ask them uh, the different questions uh, in relation to so many different dimensions of uh, the total non-profit perspective. 
there is no limitation on asking uh, the kind of question as long as uh, you ask uh, the very relevant and professional question to which you think uh, the answer uh, would lead uh, you a long way in uh, making your strategies uh, more effective. The next question also happens to be uh, very important and interesting. And the fact is it takes us to the next level. And that is, uh, what is it that we should consider before we start uh, either hiring uh, personal communicators or seeking uh, the volunteers to do this particular job? Uh, what really are the parameters on the basis of which we make the decision? Here are the people who would do this job effectively. Well, there are a few important questions that uh, we have to answer. And let me uh, enumerate those uh, questions uh, one by one. Well, in the first place, uh, you have to be clear about uh, the uh, qualification of uh, the personal communicator and how is that related to the cause uh, for which you think that person uh, should be uh, working. If there is a uh, match between the two, well, I think uh, that you, should, you should go ahead uh, with hiring or taking that person on board. Uh, another thing uh, that uh, you have to consider is the amount of paperwork which these people have to do. Uh, because uh, going um, and seeing different stakeholders who we believe are uh, professionals in their own right, because you go for professionals as uh, your directors, as your other stakeholders, because you always need their support. So you have to go to them very well prepared. So the people uh, who need to do uh, a lot of uh, paperwork uh, in relation to a certain cause, uh, also uh, becomes the basis of whether or not they can become good communicators. And then you see uh, we have the questions like uh, how much traveling is involved. And then the question of uh, to what extent these people uh, can be on their own, especially when they happen to be in remote areas or uh, you know, away from the decision-making center. Uh, do they really need uh, the immediate uh, the supervisory support or they can make certain uh, strategic decisions uh, in terms of uh, the execution uh, the, on their own. And I would say the rather tactical, tactical decisions and not strategic decisions because uh, uh, whatever they do in the marketplace is a reflection of the strategy and is a translation of uh, the, what you already have put together as a strategy or a set of strategies and then um, you know, translate that into different tactics. So as long as these people are good at uh, the making you know, uh, independent decisions in terms of uh, uh, different tactics, uh, they, are, uh, they could be good people. Another thing uh, we have to keep in mind uh, while selecting uh, the personal communicators, do they have the capacity to take refusals, resistance, and uh, the all kinds of obstacles that uh, may come in their way? If the answer is, uh, yes, they can do that, then uh, you should go ahead and uh, recruit them uh, as personal communicators. Uh, organizations uh, have experienced that uh, that population that have been uh, subject to their uh, programs uh, could also be very good communicators. For example, those people who have been part of the rehabilitation program of uh, drug addicts uh, can be very good communicators while talking with those you know, who are druggies because they fully understand uh, the kind of uh, situation that those druggies are uh, passing through. And they also going to have a very good understanding of uh, what really motivates them into do it and then quit it. So with that understanding of the motivations, these people who have been subject to your programs can also be very, very good communicators. Thanks.